Welcome back to Waze. Thelma Ekio has over 20 years experience working in the development sector as an impact investor donor, philanthropic advisor, and social entrepreneur. She has worked in over 22 African countries, and that has opened her up to the challenges that businesses face in Africa, and she's here with us. So remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or send an SMS to 81 803-84663. Thank you so much for joining us, Thelma. Pleasure. You're looking Happy amazing. New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> it's great ah, to see everyone. So who is starting for? I think I can anymore. Oh. Take the floor. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just delve right into it. Mm -hmm. According to the statistics by NBS, it, it tells us that about 99.9% .9 of the SME population of Nigeria made up of micros and a huge population of that have startup capital less than 50,000. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about strategies for business, it looks very, very, um, how should I put it? Very straightforward, straightforward, very literate. Everybody knows how to write. Everybody knows how to do a business plan. How do we really address the micros? And noting the fact that they tell us our literacy um, rate is like 54%. So how do these small businesses that actually form the, the, you know, the, the mm -hmm. largest part of the population, how do they get to do strategies for okay. winning business? So thank you for that question. I always say when I hear questions like this, I say, are we talking about business people or are we talking about entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. Because there's a vast difference. And so that is, that's my starting point. Because if you're talking about business people, these are people that set up um, businesses, mom and pop shops, mainly for survival. There's no strategy in survival. It's wow. just, I don't want to be hungry. I have to feed my children. Yeah. So th that is the focus. Entrepreneurs, on the other hand, uh, create, see an opportunity. They identify a problem. They see an opportunity to solve that problem through a business vehicle. And therein lies where strategy comes in. Because the process of developing the solution is a strategy. Okay, so that's the first significant distinction. Uh, what you have, and you're right about the statistics about the numbers of uh, micro uh, enterprises, and I think there's nothing wrong. There's a phrase that I hate, but it's a phrase that everyone uses, bottom of the pyramid. They function and they operate at the bottom of the pyramid. So the bottom of the pyramid is where you know, most of the poor live. And if you read a book by Paul Colliers, by that type of title, Bottom of the Pyramid, he's essentially saying that even though those people are at the bottom of the pyramid, it doesn't mean that they don't have earning capacity mm -hmm. or influencing capacity through their buying power. What we've not been able to convert very well in Nigeria is you know, empowering that base to show that, yes, they may not be as poor, as rich, or as literate. I'm happy you mentioned mm -hmm. literate as the rest of us but they're a significant number and have a strategic level of influence yes. that can be used to change a conversation. That hasn't happened. It's just like micro, small, micro businesses, well, they need help. That's how people refer to them. Exactly. But they're a very strong force. And I think, you know, uh, one of my partners refers to Nigeria as a country of shopkeepers. Hmm. Everybody has a side hustle. I, I don't know who, everyone I, I meet has something. You know, my, my, ho my housekeeper, is trying to make hair, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah. you, you, what, that kind of energy, what, what are we doing with this? Mostly nothing. So I think, I, I think that therein lies the problem. The strategy is not being able to galvanize the collective influence of that body uh, politic to, to use them for something rather than, you know, focusing on them as just being micro. Because that in itself, that tag in itself, I find is disempowering. Mm. Um, exactly. yeah. it's, it's interesting wow. that you talk about bottom of the pyramid because I'm also familiar with mm -hmm. SMENG, which you recently started, your managing yes. partner. Yes. Amazing um, initiative. Thank you. Um, so SMENG is a, it's an impact investment platform mm -hmm. focused on women, bottom of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. And top of the pyramid is yes. what I read. Yes. And what struck me was why top of the pyramid? Good. You know, because the need supposedly is it's at the bottom of the pyramid. pyramid. Uh -huh. So can you just shed more light? So I, I, I mean, so I guess all of us on this table will qualify as mid to high level, right? That has uh, research has found that 
that's the most difficult uh, spot for growth to happen. Women have a self-imposed ceiling. Aside from the one society puts on also, we have a self-imposed ceiling. So I was talking to colleagues at Bank of Industry, and I said, you know, why is it that you know, the funds available to women are always like 20 million, and then the ones available to men are, you know, if you can do 500 million, and like, women don't apply for the big funds, right? So we put these limitations on ourselves. And that's what happens to businesses that have, so for example, maybe you have 10 locations and like, I've done, I'm, I've done well, Ojare. Let me just chill and just enjoy my money. That's one of the reasons why we focus on top of the pyramid. They can scale. They can go, they can export. Another reason why we focus on top of the pyramid is that I have, I only spotted one business, women-led business that is intergenerational that has been passed to the next generation. Many of the businesses that women set up die with the founder, mm. okay? And if we're really going to talk about building an institution of this whole sector or genre of women entrepreneurs, it has to be intergenerational. Definitely, like the men do. Exactly, our daughters cannot make the same mistakes we've made. Yeah. They have to come, learn from us, be mentored. It's one of the reasons I'm fascinated by being around young women. Because I constantly, I'm hard on them, I'm sure I will tell you. <laughs> and the reason I'm hard on them is because, you know, we struggled. Uh, I still consider myself young, but in many ways in my sector, I was a pioneer, right? We struggled. You don't have to come and struggle the same way we do. And it can only be intergenerational if you learn from my experiences and know that you can't be mediocre. You can't take things for granted. You have to have very high standards. And that's what we do with the top of the pyramid businesses. We tell them you can grow beyond 500 million. There is no limitation. You, do you understand? You can pass the business to other people. You can create a business that hires thousands of people rather than your 20 staff. That's the idea. So tell me what led to the focus, because we know for SMENG, you're focused on women. And, you know, is, is this your strategy of mm -hmm. trying to solve, you know, a problem? Because we know that if we truly want to change the, this nation, for mm -hmm. instance, we, the focus has to be on SMEs. Mm -hmm. We must be able to support SMEs and see them grow. We Absolutely. can't just have one, one business and we say, oh, you know, I don't want to call it business. But we, we can't have those monopolies anymore. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to spread them. So w was that a strategy for you, focusing on women? Mm -hmm. And how is that strategy work, working? Okay, this is, a, is an excellent question. So first of all, um, my, my politics are personal. That's what I say. I've always worked for women and worked with women. Mm -hmm. Every country I've worked in, across Africa, everything I've done, even when they give me a mandate that does not include women, I find a way <laughs> <laughs> to I'm building it. Yeah. Because look, I'm a family of seven girls. Whoa. So even from you know, growing up, I knew that you had to be especially special to do something. you know. And so that has always driven everything I've done. When I had the chance to start up my own business, it was a no-brainer that I would actually focus on women. Mm. And then I, my partners and I, you know, first we realized that everything that we're talking about around what is this new field called gender lens investing, the reason why it's strategic and important is that the, there's a phrase that says poverty has a woman's face in Africa. Yeah. Mm. The, if you look at the, the figures around uh, financial exclusion, the, the majority of the numbers are women. Yeah. So, you know, just even aside from being an emotional issue for me, it's also a very strategic issue because if you're really going to change the dynamics around how resources are allocated across the different strata, you have to focus on women. I personally enjoy training women. It's like my drug, you know, I just love it because you can actually track when you see a woman who has received skills and what she does, and then one who hasn't. Um, your question about is it easy, I, no one has asked me that, and I'm happy you've asked. Is this the most difficult thing? Because first of all, with women, they believe that you've become their friend. Mm. So it's like, oh, why aren't you giving me some of this money now? Why are you telling me my business has to be structured? And I always tell people, I say, you know, yeah, we'll always have good relationships, but work is work. And you know, if, if you have some, especially when you're giving out money, you're accountable for that money, you have to make sure that the, the women that you work with have done everything correctly to get the money. And that is usually the difficulty because you are telling women, you have to register your business, you have to get an AFDAC number, mm -hmm. and they're like, what the hell? Yes. You know, and then some women, I marry recently, they're like, but my husband is a partner, what do I do about him? You know, I'm like, I didn't say drive your husband, I'm just saying, 
the, the ownership things, structure yes. of the business? Is it properly documented? That is where the hard work is. Exactly. I am so, <laughs> I'm so into this discussion. <laughs> okay, so considering and knowing that we're in Nigeria, mm -hmm. And the business and the challenges that SMEs face are enormous, mm -hmm. coming from double taxation, lack of infrastructure, capacity building, and all that. How does one actually plan around these things? And mm -hmm. knowing that you know you're not very certain of what the next policy would mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. and how it's going to affect you. Yeah. With your experience mm -hmm. and the number of years you've spent doing this, what is your advice to an entrepreneur? How do you plan around so, these things? You have to have a big liver, mm. first of all. <laughs> I mean, the Nigerian environment is it's hostile harsh. to entrepreneurship. It's very harsh. I think anyone who lies to you about, you know, I say to people that entrepreneurship has introduced me to myself. Mm. And what I mean by that is that it's taught me that I'm not a quitter. It's taught me that things are very, very, when, when challenges come, something in you rises above. Because there are many times that, I actually started looking at job applications again, like, shouldn't I just go and get a job? I was, it was very lucrative, you know. So it's, it's a very difficult environment, but guess what? If you make it in Nigeria, you're cool anywhere. anywhere. And the opportunities in Nigeria are endless. Everyone complains about this country. All I see around me are just opportunities. Wow. You know, I believe, you know, I, I have several businesses and, you know, I, I tell every woman, I say, look, have multiple sources of income because when there's a recession, you don't know which one. You know, so I have the one that's my passion. I have the one that I'm trained for. I have the one that I invested in. And no one taught me that. Even in school, I wasn't. I just realized that in this environment, they have to be multiple. multiple. The MBA doesn't prepare you for it. <laughs> you have to learn in the yeah, trenches. Yeah, that's that's yeah. 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 All right, Tina, so I have a question, right? Yes, I do. So, I mean, I like that you put that clarity around business people and entrepreneurs because I think you know, everyone we just goes around, yes, interchangeably, everybody just says I'm an entrepreneur, and it's just like, you know, a buzzword. So what's your advice to my 24-year-old sister, mm -hmm. who's working in a bank, but has this business idea that she's passionate about? Mm -hmm. How does she transition from, you know, her nine to five? I know I said, oh, it's easy, because, you know, she, she, she doesn't have any tires, she's single, <laughs> she can't afford to make oh, all the mistakes. Oh, the tag of being single, yeah. <laughs> You know, no children, so yeah. she can do make all the mistakes now. What, what's what's your advice from your experience working mm -hmm. with women in you know different um, works of life, basically? Mm -hmm. So first of all, I need to have coffee with her. She shouldn't quit. We have coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she shouldn't quit her job just yet. She needs a plan. She needs okay. a plan. I tell people. If you have the cushion of a job, that's the best time to plan. Right. You know, don't just jump out. The, the, what really upsets me the most is, you know, as an entrepreneur just jumps out, they have an idea, then they go to a bank to get a loan. The bank is the last place you should go to if yeah, you want to set up a business, you know. So these are things that I now know over time. And so that's why I'm, I'm talking about really helping a lot of people. I'm like, first of all, the business plan is not the first thing you do. Every Nigerian entrepreneur starts with the business, the business plan. plan. The first thing you do is to test the customer. Who are the potential Ooh. customers? Who is going to be willing to pay for this? And through some type of market research, there's a phrase now that is in our sector called the design thinking. Yeah. You know, you need to be able to find out what does the customer really want? Like a proof of concept. If like no, 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 even if you, before you have your, before you even go that far, say you have an idea to do this type of a drink. Right. You now take it to people and say, what type of drinks would you want in the afternoon mm. before you start packaging? But what we do, we package, we do everything, then you put it in shop and right side, and then nobody is buying, and you're wondering why is it, and you know? 50, exactly. People, people, and, yeah. and that is the problem with how business is done here. Yeah. Yeah. Every entrepreneur I meet tells me, so I've put together my business plan, and I'm like, hey, that's theory. You know, with you know what? We have stuff. a video, because for <laughs> some of you that don't know, Ms. Thelma dragged me from my house <laughs> on the 1st of December, and she launched a book, and this book is amazing. It's called mm -hmm. the, uh, Daily De uh, Declarations for God's Entrepreneur. I don't know if our producer have just a, a snack, um, sneak peek of the, the book launch. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh. <laughs> um, I didn't know what the book was about. And then a few days ago, he reminded me that 
Today is exactly 10 years since I moved back to Nigeria, um, to Abuja. And then I saw, I realized what he was doing. And this morning he said something very uh, amazing to me that just was an indicator that today was the day that we had to uh, launch the book. And everything that could possibly go wrong with launching this book went wrong. The devil did everything in his power to spoil this. And for me, that is just proof that it's an important thing that had to happen. The book has 16 chapters. It's a very, the chapters are short because entrepreneurs literally will tell you they don't have time. So we made it very short. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Thelma, for this Thank book. You. you know, like, I, as I said in the, um, during the book launch, mm -hmm. yeah, that, you know, this one was, this one was, um, how do I put it now? This one, I know, is a clear indication that if we're able to get a hold of this book, you're going to start the year right, especially for businesses. Because you know why I'm focused on businesses? For entrepreneurs. On, on, on entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, rather. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> we <laughs> learned something. The reason, the reason the, no, because I feel that when you're financially empowered, mm. you have the clarity to think straight. You have the clarity Absolutely. to take the to right decisions. decisions. You're not under pressure. You know, because financial empowerment is very key. Okay. You know, so thank you so much, Thelma. Can you just tell us a bit about this? See, you know what? There was something she mentioned in this book that, I mean, no, when she was saying the, the speech, when she, she was, she was, she, she had a contract of 200 million. And in fact, that story, I'm still <laughs> trying to recover on her behalf. <laughs> but how she was able to rise above that, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, she, she has a success story that I think everybody need to learn from mm -hmm. because people are going through a lot in their in their businesses and they think oh the whole world has come to an end they but she never gives up she's always very positive she's very i am trying to learn to be like no, that no. <laughs> so tell us more about the book yeah no i i don't know how people do uh, how people are entrepreneurs in nigeria without god mm. i really don't know mm. whoever god is to you in my case is the lord jesus christ and for me you know i've had success in my career before I started my business, whatever was the height of being in the philanthropic world, I reached that. There was nothing else. And people actually said to me, I had peaked, you know, and almost like when I would, what are you going to do next? That kind of thing, tongue in cheek. And, but what God has done with me and through me, through my business, has been amazing. Incidentally, you came to my New York event, yes. and it's not just in Nigeria, just globally. He introduces me, he brings contracts. And then I knew I had a responsibility to package this and, and share. And every prayer and de uh, declaration in the book are things that over the years he taught me personally. And I'm doing this, you know, the funny thing about it is that somehow we've become a world where it's not funky to talk about God in business. I don't Absolutely, know how it became yeah. like that. Um, but this is the core of who I am. I wasn't always like this, so it's very important to say that it's been a, a journey. And where I am now, I'm very comfortable to say I am nothing without what God did to me and for me. And so we're giving the book out for free Ooh. to your viewers. Um, I'm Oprah. Happy. Yes. Yay. My copy. Yes, I have my copy. So for all our viewers, yes. we're going to keep um, pushing it out there, even on our social media handle. All you need to do, just tell us that you need the book. Follow and us that on our you social. watch Ways. And you watch Ways, yes. So you follow, have to follow, Ways. follow our social media. Oh, unfortunately, Mr. Thelma Ekio is not on Instagram. Why? No, I'm not. And she was going to ask you why. Why? She said she's afraid. Why? So it's, 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 so it's much Twitter you should be afraid of. I, 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 Twitter. I, 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 Twitter. No, I'm on LinkedIn. She's on LinkedIn. I told you already. It's, That's where I'm happy. Instagram is milder you know, than Twitter. So, but she's, Ms. Thelma Ekia is going to be giving out free books to all our viewers. As long as you are an entrepreneur and you want to succeed in business, this book is coming to you free. We're not selling it. It is completely free. In case you see this book anywhere, it's in traffic, yes. and they want to sell it to you, <laughs> know that it's fake. So yeah. it's free. And um, you're such a blessing. And um, do you have any part, uh, parting words? So no, this year, I, I just want to say that this year is really strategic. Mm -hmm. If you're an entrepreneur, this is your time. Position yourself. That thing that you've been thinking of doing, dust it off now and do. There's a window of success. And you have to step into it. Um, you know, I, I feel like people just procrastinate too much. You know, so we're talking about entrepreneurs. There's no better time to just step out. And if you're a woman, 
doubly so. So happy whoa. new year, everyone. Whoa, um, whoa. <laughs> I have learned a lot today. I have. So what have you learned in summary? Okay, so no strategy in survival. Now that is totally new for me. Mm -hmm. And I I have been banking SMEs for over 10 years. And this is a new lesson. Mm -hmm. This proves that we learn every day. Absolutely. And I just found my new best friend. <laughs> don't steal her from me. <laughs> After a while. I know, you don't look for me. So, uh, <laughs> So what's your lesson for today? For me, what came out strongly is test your customers, you know, as, you know, simple as that sounds. It's just obviously design very thinking, critical. Yeah. And I'm giving this advice to my 24-year-old sister. Just go I learned uh, design thinking the very hard way. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, what stood out for me is the self-imposed um, ceiling that a lot of women mm -hmm. place on, on, the, on themselves, you know. I, 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 and I hope we shatter it this year. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and we, 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 we break boundaries. Because we truly, we are truly, like um, Ms. Thelma had said, we're truly positioned for this year. Mm -hmm. You know, if we can get up and go, this is the right year. And I hope we have been a blessing to you guys because the truth is we want you guys to start 2020 and start it right. right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be bringing her, even if she will not answer it now, <laughs> but we're bringing her more and more and more. But we want to get successes from this show. We want yes. to get women that watch this show and their business exploded. So you can watch a repeat broadcast at 3 p.m. tomorrow and you know um catch us live on youtube every day it's been a very insightful conversation it has been thank you so, yeah, thank you so much thank Ms. You. Thelma, for coming so, so let's much. please keep the conversations on our social media platform as we continue to hear what you are saying so in case you missed the quote for today yes now let's take it again customers don't do buy, buy what, what you, you do. do they, they buy, buy why, why, why you, do you do it so if you listen to the conversations very well from miss Thelma and miss um oh, I didn't Uri, you were yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to those conversations you know that it's tied around that yeah. um quote so enjoy the rest of your evening love you guys